Hey, welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people. We've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Love is Blind, Season 6, Episode 1 Recap. Be sure to like, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. So this has been one of, I think, your favorite shows for us to do. Love is Blind. Because... They usually give us about four episodes each time. This time they decided to dump six on us. How you feeling so far in the first the first dump? Uh, I'm good with it because I, this is my favorite show because of the concept of it, mm -hmm. right? Compared to all the other ones, Married at First Sight, it, it's you have no choice in it. Here, everybody has good choice. Now they can't see each other. Right now, one thing I have always said about this show is they need to start throwing in some fours and fives because a lot of these, a lot of these people are pretty attractive uh -huh. folks. And so when they have a reveal, the odds of them being like, uh, no terrible. I think they need to have a, a good mix in different We've proportions. We've seen some us though. Some, un I'm just not attracted. We've seen some of those. We have, but there hasn't been many when we watch it, when the first episode where you see all the ladies and all the guys, mm -hmm. it's rare that I'm like, Ooh, why are you here? You have no shot. You know, it's rare that all of them, I'm like, okay, all these are pretty attractive people. So I'd be curious if they threw in a few threes and fours. Because we all know there are some people out there that we would even kiss on the mouth, you know, if you paid us money. So okay. <laughs> what if they did one of those that, you know, when the, when you ask the girlfriend, so what, so what is she like? like? Well, she's got a great personality. Well, she's got a pretty face. <laughs> she is so sweet. She is so nice. Such a nice young girl. Yeah, but what does she look like? She's a Christian. She's in the choir. <laughs> no, but but what does she look like? She can cook her tail off. <laughs> and you know it's good. <laughs> leave that alone. I leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> what is your first thought? As I, I, I'm, I'm glad. By the way, I always talk about this. I'm glad that Nick Lachey stopped saying, and of course, I'm Nick Lachey, because somebody had, they must have seen us. And went, Nick, you might want to stop saying that. <laughs> that was that was 30 years ago. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, their, their intro every time is kind of annoying. Even this one they did. I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we know who you are. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one was, was good because, you know, and I don't know about you, but did it feel like they're speeding it up? Yeah, like that that first day, it just seems like it, it sped up a little bit, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. And so you got them coming to the women's quarters and men's quarters to introduce themselves. And they always kind of ask, why? Love is blind. Why would you sign up for this? Mm -hmm. And the ladies was an AD. I was a dancer for sports teams and wanted to find somebody that's not focused on her looks, which that's what the experiment is for. The one lady I had a disagreement with is Jessica. Why? Because Jessica says she's nervous to tell the guys she has a 10-year-old kid. And, of course, then she goes into her crying. Thing. She's an, another crier. Um, and she says she's got to wait until they get to know her first. I don't agree with that strategy. Why not Why? just be honest? It's not, it's not being dishonest. It's just it, when certain conversations are going to start, you know they're going to have those conversations. Then have them then. Why rush through it? Hi, I'm a mother. We're a package deal. <laughs> I would rather that because I feel like if you're hiding it, there's a reason. She and I had someone, I had, I had someone do that to me when I lived in San Antonio. I, started, I was dating her for three weeks before I knew she had four kids. Mm. Never told me. Well, I mean, there's a difference between one and four. Well, even if you have one, just tell me because okay. it gives me the power of choice from the very beginning. I don't want to, because I think what she wants to do is connect with people, get them to like her and then be like, Hey, BTW. Yeah. I have a 10 year old. I don't think that's right. So question for you answer for you let's see if they match if she told you she had four kids on the first date would you have tried sooner would i have tried what oh, oh. Guess so. would I <laughs> <laughs> one thing i know she's doing <laughs> back in those days when this happened the odds were higher. I think that she might say yes. So, I don't know. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Uh, <laughs> See, this is why she's not telling them right away. They're like, oh, they're going to think on the honeymoon, they're getting some. No. <laughs> they open up the pods, right? And um, 
It's, it's interesting because you get uh, Chelsea and Trevor, and he, it's interesting because all these couples is their first meeting and how they're going. To, and Trevor's one of those guys who say he's looking for a best friend on paper, um, but he wants some big sexual energy, right? I, I, which I think is a dope way to kind of put it. Like, oh, so you're a freak? No, 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 no. I just said I want my partner to have that energy for me. Don't blame him. I mean, Trevor. Trevor's a big guy. He mm-hmm. has big things he requires until great <laughs> go for that um sounds like he's from texas <laughs> <laughs> with the mullet so did you did you get anything out of the fact that trevor's dog is named chelsea and chelsea's dog is named trevor i just the only thing i thought about was okay so what happens if they get together and they're um uh, how, how's it work trevor but both him and the dog come running <laughs> Chelsea, she, shut up. What did you say to me? I, if she just yelled, stop licking me, Trevor, I like I wonder who who's the, what? Oh, she said right here, Trevor, and all of a sudden the dog comes yeah. up. I'm coming. So Chelsea asked him a nice question. Tell me five things that, that make you smile. Mm-hmm. And here's what I like about Trevor. He's a big guy, but he's a yeah. big softy. Right yes. on, on the inside, right? So mm-hmm. he says, dogs, a sunny day, mm-hmm. butterflies. Yeah, that was weird. A good love movie, not a rom com, mm-hmm. but a love. He likes the notebook. Wow. And a fresh cut lawn. <laughs> I now, laughed okay. at that. I laughed at that because this is why I have an HOA. I don't have to cut my grass because right. I've never enjoyed a fresh cut lawn. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make me smile. Oh, no. I like to see it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> As simple as that. And but here's it. Did you catch this when he asked her the same question? Because that's what you do. Somebody asks you a question. All right, well, what about you then, right? And she says, "Sunset, cold Coors Light, and add them together. Forget about it." Now he said, "Oh well, that came from." It came, he referenced where it came from, right? But did you realize that was only three things? Actually, no, it was technically only two. It's two things. Yeah. yeah, I did. Well, she said, add them together, so I made that three. Yeah. It's a, but she's still missing. <laughs> yeah, it's only two things, because he had named four, and she's like, give me one more. So yeah. he got to five, and all she did was... Now, of course, we all know there's editing, and maybe they just didn't put all that on camera. Who knows? Right. But sure. once she said Coors Light, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to date a Coors Light kind of girl. <laughs> nope. I need somebody to match my bougie. You're not about to bring a 12-pack of Coors Light in my house you for us? come with some no. Stella Artois or something. <laughs> Some- something, that, something that requires you to change the shape of your mouth when you pronounce it. Yeah, <laughs> Coors. yeah. Oh, I'm, Stella Artois. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in college, and I don't watch NASCAR, so don't need any Coors Light in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chelsea's on another date um, on with Jimmy, right, who's a small-town guy from North Carolina, um, and... He wants to travel, which is good for her because she likes to travel, right? Because she's a flight attendant, if I remember correctly. Correct. Um, and he says he wants to travel and visit every NFL, NBA, and MLB stadium and arena in the country. Exactly what every woman wants to hear on a first date. Well, at least that's travel. She might not want to go, but it's still travel. <laughs> so I think that's a win-win for both. She's a flight attendant, so she has those buddy passes. Mm-hmm. So he can travel for free. I already like Jimmy because he's a Scorpio. Right. Once he says Scorpio, I'm like, Jimmy, <laughs> my man, my notes. I thought they were both pretty goofy and they almost seemed like a match. Like he's watching them the first time because like, they're both. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm like, OK, these, these goofy two can be good together. Right. Possibly. I mean, it's a good start. It's a good introduction date because you got to figure that has to be awkward just to walk yeah. into a pod. You don't know who's over there mm-hmm. and just start a conversation. Sometimes that could be hard to click with mm-hmm. someone. So at least they had a good introductory meeting well jimmy had another date with um fran drescher i mean sorry jessica or she called them j squared <laughs> and you know interesting thing is jessica was like oh, you know i consider myself a homebody and it's probably because she doesn't have a babysitter <laughs> that could be a reason um uh, Jessica seems nice. And the fact that he said he liked her voice and that she said people say she sounds like Fran Dressel, I'm like, I could totally see it. But oh, I didn't get it until she said it. She said it I was like, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could I could totally see it. So here's my thing about Jessica. I think I think she's beautiful, but I'm curious, what is it like without all the makeup? 
because mm. it's a lot. I'm just curious what that's going to look like for. Yeah. But man, is she a crier? I mean, I don't know about you. I just can't, can't. If I was at this age, I couldn't mm. deal with that. If right. you if younger, maybe. But she's a, she's a big crier, and I think if being away from your daughter and all that is so hard, maybe you shouldn't have came on the show. Right. Well, you know, here's the thing about this. She's looking for that kind of love and looking for a stepdaddy um, for for her child. So, you know, that's, that's, she's looking she's looking for this. So I, I get why she's there. Um, and it's normal for, especially if you're a single parent, right, um, and you have the child all the time, that you're going to have this separation anxiety. That's going to happen. Um, it's a good thing that she actually gave Jimmy a nickname to. I think it's good. It's a good sign for them because, again, I thought Chelsea and Jimmy great. Then I see this, and she gives him Jimmy with the juice. I'm like, yo, first date, you got a nickname? This is a good sign. They they had a good meeting, too. I mean, it's some good chemistry uh, with them. Now we'll have to find out how Jimmy feels about the 10-year-old. But yeah. good chemistry, a good first date, good introductory meeting. Again, Jimmy had two back-to-back good yeah. introductory meetings, which – I think would be difficult for me to do just one. So kudos to him. Um, and we'll see how their adventure goes. Now, next up, the star of this episode was Matthew. And his first date, I like the way they kind of sequence this, right? Well, Jessica with Jimmy. Now let's get Jessica with Matthew. And and they just keep pairing them off that way, right? So Jessica and Matthew. And he starts off with, I have uh, questions written down in their number, one through 15. Pick a number. <laughs> That already, when he first said, I have questions written down, I was like, uh-oh. And then he goes, they're numbered between 1 and 50. They're like, Jesus, really? And then he said, pick it up. I was like, I kind of like this. I did I too. I like where this is going. <laughs> I, I, I like the strategy because it's to me, it's it'd be one thing if I, I have 15 questions I'm going to ask you. Question number one. <laughs> da, 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 da. That would That's make it. I thought he was going. Yeah, that would make it bad. <laughs> but the fact that he says I have them 1 through 15, pick one. Mm. And so right. she was like, okay, this would be fun, number whatever. And so she said, number 10, yeah. Yeah. And so, whatever uh, that question was, I forget, but I thought it was good. But Matthew, just from watching him, before I even see the rest of this episode, just his first demeanor, mm -hmm. I got Dexter vibes. I'm like, you know, this dude is a serial killer. <laughs> it I can see why, because he really does kind of give that off. I've never watched Dexter, but I know exactly what you mean. And the fact is, the f she plays along with his game. All right, give me number 10. He asked the question, which both you and I completely forget what it is, because that's not the important part. The important part, she answers it immediately. Like, mm -hmm. da, da 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 And what about you? Uh... Yeah, uh, I, I really only plan on asking questions, not answering them. <laughs> Rule number one, never ask a question you are not prepared to answer. Fellas, the all three of y'all, <laughs> in the words of Birdman, all three of y'all, if you ever ask a woman a question, you're out on a date, be prepared to answer that exact same question. Ladies, but isn't that just thing. a social, that's just a social norm. If I'm like, hey, Yanni, how are you doing? Your proper response is, I'm doing well, Terrell. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> No, what are you doing today? To be, I'm gonna do I'm this. Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't prepared to answer that. Question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not taking questions today, Yanni. So I just want to make sure you're good, but don't you worry about me and mine. <laughs> so no. Uh, so he's just odd, and so then they pair him up with Sarah Ann, mm -hmm. and he asks her, she, you know, whatever number she picked. The question was, what are some of your short term goals? Now don't. I get it, maybe. Sarah Ann's a little chatty, little talker, mm -hmm. kind of yeah. rambled a bit. And he was just like, yeah, all that love stuff, I'm out. It just yeah. walks out. <laughs> well, That's trifling. He, the fact that he walked out of her, she was like, thank God, right? But I'll tell you why her reaction, and she probably did that on purpose. Because when he first walked in, he's not showing a lot of confidence. It shows immediately. Because she simply asked, how's it going today? And he was just like, and so she's just like, you know what? Let me end this. Let me do us both a favor. <laughs> I don't think that was intentional. I think she was just answering the question and being herself. And then he just walked out. As soon as he heard her say the L word, he was like, I don't have time for all that feelings and emotion and just ghost her. I thought that was crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, then he had another day. Yeah, I was like, oh, they go, they're making him the star of episode one for sure. Amber and Matthew. Now, Amber picks question number four. He goes, oh, that's been picked too much already today. Pick another number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, this dude has no clue at all. Socially awkward is really what it boils down to. He's just socially awkward. And if this is how he is with a wall in between you, yeah, imagine to go to happy hour with him yeah, <laughs> and talk to people uh, or a networking event. I think that would have to be painful. The first thing I thought after he did that, I was like, yeah, he's def he is definitely not getting chosen. He is, he is going to be single all the way through. Right? That was my initial thought. And then he goes on a date with A.D., a.k.a. Amber Desiree, the black Amber. And uh, <laughs> she asked, what is he looking? Hey, so what are you looking for? He's like, right off the bat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, seriously? <laughs> That's a normal question in this kind of scenario, right? Well, she took charge. Yeah. And so maybe that's, maybe that's what he liked is the fact that he was like, oh, okay. I like the fact that she she just very assertive. And so here's where at first I'm like, Matthew's an ass as I'm watching mm -hmm. these other dates. Then he gets this date and he says that he's not doing Love is Blind to be a C-list celebrity. And that was uh, another example of him being an ass, but go ahead. <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. I, because how many times do we see people doing this for for clicks and, and Instagram subscribers and all that type of stuff? Somehow I knew you would like that comment from him, but... Him I did. saying it's a sealant celebrity means yeah. that he's just an ass because you know I'm not trying. If he's just said I'm not trying to do this for fame, same thing. Sealant celebrity was like go on with your little friends. No, sealant celebrity is what we all think of a lot of some of these YouTube <laughs> folks and and people that are on TikTok. You know they're not a list celebs just because you have a bunch of subscribers. Mm. You know C list. So I would agree with how he would that make it. us e list because you know we we still haven't even hit our ten thousand subscribers yet. We're not cocky like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the difference. Our goal is it to be famous. You yeah, know, our goal is like, hey, how do you? I'm not walking around with my at just Terrell on my t shirt and hats and all that type of stuff. So Actually, now if we my, start getting on my station stuff. I always have it on the back door. If we if, if we start getting like. <laughs> Some sponsors and all that. Would I do that? Hell yes. If I'm getting paid to do it. <laughs> so. Uh, Sealess Terrell. Yeah. So he talks about how, you know, he, he talked to his therapist. He goes, because everybody's doing that these days. I'm like, no, people have been doing therapy for a long time. This mm -hmm. isn't something new. But I'm glad that he's doing it because we talk about how important yes. it is to do some of your own work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Talk to a therapist if you think you need it. And. What I've seen so far from Matthew, I'm like, yes, you need to be in therapy yeah. and working through whatever it is that makes you um, the way he is. Apparently, so, he's a comedian, too, because he's like, hey, I'm the king of first impressions. That's not always a good thing. Sarcasm. Waka, 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 waka. Sarcasm. You know, so. I, but whatever he said, it worked. Yeah. Because AD was feeling him. Mm -hmm. Right. And she said, hey, the beginning was strange, but I had a good time. Yeah. And so we see that they made a connection. So then I started to, after this, I'm like, well, maybe Matthew's not that bad. Right. It, it, it really, because he got comfortable. And he started actually speaking and opening up. And you can see that these two had a connection. And it's, you know, the opposites attract. The Paul Abdul effect, you know, because um, Matt is a country boy. AD is a city girl. Uh, not in that sense, even though. Judging by some of the things she said later that she probably wasn't because she did say she's into the ballers, the players and never really gives a nice guy a chance. And she's thinking of this guy as a nice guy. Um, and maybe she's going to give him a chance because it looks like she's falling for this guy, even though she can't believe it. It does. I, I couldn't believe it either. But I was like, hmm, you know, maybe Matthew's not that bad. And mm -hmm. let's see where this goes for them. And exactly. then after she get a touch, she gets a touch of the country boy mm -hmm. and all that. Then she has a date with her norm. Right. So Clay, and it seems like they have good chemistry from the get go though. And, and then, you know, here's the thing. He decided he wanted to do his radio voice. And I was just like, oh, jeez. And then he said he wanted a cat. And she was like, oh, ew. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing though. I, I, I want to see more Clay because 
I'm getting a phony vibe mm-hmm. about him. And he's saying that he's ready for a long-term commitment and, you know, thank you for validating me because I've been doubting myself. I'm like, mm, you don't come across like the type of dude who doubts yourself, mm-hmm. but could be, right? Right. But I'm just wondering, is he running game? You know, I want, want to get a cat, trying to make himself seem more vulnerable and all that. But is it for real? Is it for show? We shall see. It was a great line because, you know, because uh, it was him showing women always say they want to see a man be vulnerable. Right. So he showed his vulnerability by saying, you know, I was a little bit unsure until this conversation. Right. You did it to me. Right. It's you. Right. I was really about to pack my bags and leave. And then I met you in the pod. <laughs> and then the stars opened up and it was beautiful. And I feel like this is where I need to be. You touch me in a way that no one else has touched me in the first two minutes I've met them. Right. So <laughs> Exactly. So we'll see. I'm hoping it's genuine. But right now I'm getting a vibe like this dude's running game. Playa. Well, everybody goes back to their quarters and it's time to compare notes and, you know, it seems like the guys and the girls are a, a little different in the sense. There's Trumpers out there saying, hey, look, here's my number one. Chelsea says, and he's happy there. But here's the thing. Jessica also kind of gives up her, who her number one is, right? And then Ashley was like, well, but does he make your vagina pulse? <laughs> so, ladies, that is the determining factor, huh? That is the question I want to ask the ladies. Please comment on this is did you meet somebody have you ever met somebody that made your vagina pulse Mm -hmm. and is that your litmus test to see Ooh, i'm gonna like him i'm just curious i'm as soon as we get done with this i'm gonna go ask my wife (laughs) (laughs) no i don't want to know the answer to that one so yes you will never know the answer keep keep that to (laughs) yourself you know but but this is the thing we always talk about with this show is like when you get back into the quarters after your first round of the pods Mm -hmm. Keep that close to the vest. Yes. Don't share. Maybe say you had a great connection with someone. Don't give too many details so they can figure out who it is. You know, Chelsea's telling everybody that, you know, um, I'm excited about Trevor mm-hmm. and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of playing your hand a bit. We always um, talked about this, didn't we? You always yeah. was like, hey, shut your mouth in the, in the quarters. Yeah, and the quarters just never know because it's a contest, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're trying to all win and get married at the end of this. Um, AD tells everybody that she likes Matt and all the ladies are like, what? <laughs> they were like, you like, man, who? Which, which Matt? Was there yeah. a different one in there? They're looking at their notes. It's like, I only saw one Matthew. Is, <laughs> is that the small town guy with the 15 questions? You liked him? <laughs> now they're all questioning her. <laughs> Do you, boo? Do you? <laughs> well, the next, the next morning, the women assumed that Vince would be cooking for the guys and apparently... They were absolutely right about attorney Chef Vince, and that's the first and last we've heard of him. <laughs> hey, he he got his spot. He got his little spotlight. All right, he made he didn't hit the the cutting room floor, so he made it. Yeah, he did. Um, so day two in the pods, Amy and Johnny. Um, these two seem to nerd out almost immediately over Japanese. Wanted to travel to Japan and Japanese anime. They did. You know, and I think if if Johnny likes to travel, Amy likes international travel, so those are good signs. Yes. Amy's mom is from Spain. She was born in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Uh, She does have a sexy accent, you know, so so there's, and it's not like a Sofia Vergara type accent. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, I I like that one better than Sofia. Hers come, hers didn't show up till she started to pronounce um, Spanish names. And then all of a sudden it kicked in and it never left after that. Yeah. He was like, when, once he said, ooh, she was like, I'm rolling every R from here to Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, babe, but the more comfortable she gets with him, the more mm-hmm. her accent comes out. So I think she yeah. was trying to, to, to put up that facade at first. You know, Johnny's from New Jersey, has three siblings. By the way, do we know where this is being filmed at? No, I uh, we'll have to look it up and see it. And and because there's people from all over the place, so I was just like, this is different. I thought yeah. they normally were I in the same. Like that though. Well, I do too. But then the question is, is it harder to stay together if once this is over, you're immediately in a long distance relationship? 
you know, I'm almost assuming that it's probably in New York or somewhere close, or somewhere in that vicinity, just because it could be easier in that space, and especially, but who knows? Um, yeah. But then you have the North Carolina, because there's a lot of Southern accents in there as well, too. So it really and truly, the way people are moving around, it could be anywhere. And shame on us for not figuring this out, but that's because we don't have enough to pay a producer that would have told us this crap, because you and I did not read the show notes at all. Well, by the time we recap episode two, we'll know we'll exactly. Know. <laughs> we'll know exactly where they are. But I thought they had, uh, they being Amy and Johnny, they had good chemistry. Um, Amy said she's always felt like kind of an outsider. Yeah, and I think she said her dad had story. to like beg yeah. kids to come, which I'm, I'm just wondering like, why is that? As, and I think what it is, it's, it's weird for us to, to comprehend because you see she's so beautiful you're like how is it hard for you to hang out with people no. you know but that's not always just because you're pretty don't mean people want to hang out with you but as a, this, talking as kids and they were here's the difference and it kind of probably means where they were when she was growing up um in the states and remember hispanic so it doesn't mean that everybody you're in texas so it's like oh well everybody accepts everybody no that's not the case right um and I think that the, the fact is, like, for her, it just may have been that. And it may have been the family. People just, the group of people there around just didn't, kids are kids, and parents can be worse than kids. And it was Good point. Like, Good point. Good point. But also, she's another crier. So we got that. <laughs> so we got two. <laughs> oh, look at Actually, you. there's a few That's more, but I'm counting. That. I'm That's counting. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, why you got to cry? Oh, my God. What what you think of Amber, Desiree, and Clayton as we find out um, their real, you know, because before they were AD and Clay, they get on their second date and it's Amber, Desiree, and Clayton. They get a little flirty now that they learn each other's names. Well, you got to say it the way Amber, Desiree said it. Clayton, like there's no T. <laughs> Clayton. I, I, when she said, he said like, yeah, my name was Clayton, but it goes, Clayton. I was like, why'd you say it like that? That's awful. There's a T in that. That was her cheerleader voice, her dancer voice. <laughs> <laughs> could but, could be could be but at least you know they're they're opening up sharing mm -hmm. a little bit more with each other they still have some decent chemistry so yeah kudos well we see her having even more chemistry with her next date which was matthew so ad and matthew and she's like yeah, i've been randomly thinking about you all day i'm like damn even though you were on the date with clay eh. so <laughs> is that what it was <laughs> apparently you know and he's been thinking about her and blah 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 so she asked him, what's his favorite music genre? He said, well, uh, this could be the deal breaker, right? He said, I like uh, rock music and instrumental music. And I'm like, just like a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting up bodies to just music with no lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need lyrics to mess up what, um, yeah. these precise cuts. <laughs> yeah. But, and this is where we see a, a little bit more of Matt, Matthew mm. opening up because, uh, she asked him, do you have rhythm? And he said, probably more than what you realize, and that he used to get into these dance-offs. Uh, and there was a guy at a dance-off that was really bringing it to him, so he tried to do a split and tore his hamstring. And so I'm like, okay, maybe there's a fun, playful side to Matthew, and it's not as serious or as bad as he's looking so far to the other there's, folks. There's nothing playful about tearing your hamstring. I pull my hamstring, and I'm... I'm I'm ready. I get a Charlie horse and I'm ready to cry. So I can only imagine you out there trying to do all that. Then, whoo! But that's why stay in your mm -hmm. lane. Stay in your lane. You don't break out a split unless that's your normal move. Right. That's not something you just try. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what you, you think, think of you Amber think in a dance off with a brother? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to make an assumption, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, coming from a small town, maybe there's not a lot. It's like Footloose. There's like one black dude in the whole town. <laughs> it's like the valley in Texas. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? Who knows? What do you think of um, AD's irrational fear of birds attacking her and pecking out her brain? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes the weed can look like a nest. And I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, here's the thing though, Matthew is probably like, hmm, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> because he does have the serial killer vibes, right? Tell me more about these brains. This sounds interesting. <laughs> you know, here's the thing I like about what he said though. He's like, AD, uh, you know, she makes him nervous 
and comfortable at the same time. I think he's just scoring points, and it feels like he is now her top choice. Yes. I, in, in my notes, I put Matthew is laying it on thick. Yes. You know, pretty thick. And so if it's genuine, great. You know, mm-hmm. win-win for both of them. I mean, you're there for to find your person. Right. Don't waste your time with some of these other people. If you know it's a no, walk out the room, move on, and only focus on the one that you're vibing with. Right. That's what I feel like he's doing right now. Yeah, that's what it seems like. And, and, you know, weird couple, the odd couple, but we'll see how this goes. But next up, Jessica and Jimmy, they have another date, and they're eating hot wings. And apparently, you need to know the level of spice you can handle, Jimmy. Well... Yes, you do, but I feel like both of them can't handle much spice no, because, on average, wings are not that spicy. Right now, unless you order, you know, extra hot and all those type of deals, but on average, it's not that spicy. But I guess maybe spice is not their thing. She looks that cute eating wings. Thing. Not, not, <laughs> not, not many people can look good eating wings. Remember, I told you about that one date I had where I, I, I stopped it because the way she ate wings. I'm like, this is disgusting. I can't do it. <laughs> but yeah, you have to know to talk about me. But well, go ahead, go ahead. Talking about feet. Feet you can't change. You can change how you eat wings. No, you that's a about choice. The way I eat wings. <laughs> that's a, yeah, the way you eat fried chicken, that's a choice. You can eat all of the chicken, or you can take two or three bites and be done with it. It's not two or three, it's it's the, the most important parts. <laughs> no, no. No, that's a that's a choice. The way she looked eating those wings, I was just like, who? I can't do it. <laughs> So you like the way Jessica was eating her wings. I just um, said that, you know, she looked cute eating wings is what I said. <laughs> you, you know, interesting thing about this, right? Because there's, there's so much with them. They had a couple of different things here. Because at one point, Jessica actually revealed to him she hasn't talked to um, her daughter, nor has she told Jimmy about her daughter yet, right? Yep. And um, then here's the thing about it. Jessica did the slick move as she's talking to Jimmy. She called him her husband, then pretended she didn't mean to say it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Really? Oops. Yeah. Slick. Hey, husband. Oops. My bad. That's the <laughs> that, that's the wings. That's the yeah. wings talking. <laughs> <laughs> but then here's the thing. They get to this whole thing, and th- you knew this was going to happen, especially once they once they showed her talking to the women in the quarters, saying that she hadn't told them about it, but she knows she's going to have to because they're going to get to these conversations. She's like, right. I feel this connection. We're going to get to this point where we have to, so I'm going to bring it up to him. Um, he says he's looking for someone who is accepting of his family, which gets me to thinking, tell me more. What's going on with your family? Well, I think it's because he has a large family. Mm-hmm. And he has like five siblings. And so I think right. that's what he was referring to. So she decides to open up and drop the bomb and mm-hmm. really dragged it out, you know, because he's like, well, sounds like you have a secret. And she's like, well, when you say secret, I feel like it's negative. Mm-hmm. And this might not be negative. She says that she has the kid uh, and she had a kid when she was 17. So Jimmy takes a long pause. And I feel like he was calculating math. He's like, wait a minute, you're 28. 17. No, yeah, because here's the thing about it. When she says she had a 10, because she starts off and says, I have a 10 year old. And he went, click, 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 click. <laughs> he's counting back the years. How old, he's like, How old did she say she was again? Yeah. When did she start? <laughs> what was it? What was it? Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can see all of that go. And, and, and you know, it's and all the men know because it was all the, oh, how old again? <laughs> <laughs> You got what now? Tell me, tell me what again. So here's why I say it's important because of what happened after she told him. Mm -hmm. He asked, why didn't we talk about that earlier? And she says she wanted him to get to know her first Mm -hmm. and establish a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Then she says her daughter is her greatest accomplishment. Mm. To me, if it's your greatest accomplishment, why are you hiding it? Say it up front. That's your greatest. Be proud. Hey, I had a kid when I was 17 and I love him to death. That her, I agree with you. <laughs> I, agree, I agree with you in that. Sorry, I just had to get you on that. Um, I agree with you in that space. If if your child is your greatest accomplishment, you don't hide. And I get it. You're not trying to lead that way, but it, it did feel like it she had to be guided there, right? Um, but he says it's not a deal breaker for him, and he still wants to hear more about it. He's still and processing. No, he's still I processed. noticed he said it, though. Did you notice that part? Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> he's 
like, no, you want to know more about her. Come on, Jimmy. You yeah. got to figure this out. But his mind is – here's the question. Because he was so distraught when she said that. Do you think it would have been worse if she said, I have a two-year-old mm-hmm. as opposed to I have a 10-year-old? All that could play into it. Because if mm-hmm. you have a two-year-old, I'm like, why are you here? Right. At the show, you should be at home with your two-year-old. It's a 10-year-old. So is that better because there's been time? Obviously, the, that relationship is not... It's, it's not about time. It's just they're older. Right. And, you know, you can leave them with a the dad. I would feel weird about somebody being on a dating show that has a two-year-old okay. sitting at home. I think that would be odd. So he says it's not a deal breaker, but I still think he's trying to process that. So he said they had a baby with a guy she knew since elementary school. She got pregnant her senior year of high school. They broke up a year after Autumn was born, and he's still involved, which is great. But exactly. then here's here's that line that I can't stand. We are a package deal. I knew you wouldn't like that line, but okay. De- where's the lie, though? Okay. And here's the difference. She said he is a great father. He's involved. It's not like oh, I got a deadbeat daddy on the side or whatever. No, he's involved. We're, we, are, we are good, good co-parents. This is what it is. But yes, doesn't mean that he's taking Autumn. She and I are a package deal. Where's the lie? Because she should have said it from the very beginning and just been upfront with it. If, okay. If you're going, if you're going to house shopping and the realtor shows you this beautiful home and you're like, wow, I'm interested. Tomorrow I'm gonna come back and check. Then the realtor's like, okay, so by the way, there's a basement. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a whole nother level of this house we didn't tell you about last time because we want to make sure you liked it at first. Well, you might be excited. No. No. Is is, is it a finished basement? All all I'm saying is male or female, if you have children, say it up front to the people you're talking to. Don't try to like, let me get to know them, get to know me first and then say it. Just if it's your proudest accomplishment, say it. If you're ashamed of your children, I get it. But that's a whole nother problem if that's the case. Let's use one of your analogies. You're at Ugh. dinner. Okay. You're at dinner. And <laughs> you finish your meal. And the waiter comes out and says, the chef wanted you to try this wonderful dessert. It's on the house. Well, a kid is not on the house. <laughs> <laughs> the chef is very proud of this yeah. Good dessert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you're going to see a surcharge on that receipt. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not. I'm not good at this analogy thing. <laughs> but the line that I hated the most, and she, he kind of led her into it. But he's like, "Oh, she's your, she's your best friend." She's like, "Yeah, she's my best friend." I'm like, "Stop it." Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Best friend, greatest accomplishment. Say it up front. <laughs> That's all we're saying. <laughs> well, poor Jimmy, man. He he had it because he's done. He goes into the next date. He's in a date with Chelsea and uh. <sighs> it, 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 before we even get to that part it feels like when he gets in there he feels a lot freer to flirt with Chelsea now that he knows Jessica has a kid he's like oh yeah let's go yeah. and he starts really laying it on with Chelsea right he does he does you know he starts opening up you know I think she said what's your biggest achievement he said being a first generation college student which is huge for a lot of folks right and so that was good and the whole time Chelsea's like oh crap I didn't go to college. Is that, is that <laughs> cool? Face when he said that? <laughs> yeah. He did, yeah, but she was like, I didn't go to college. He was just like, oh, dang, I got I got baby over here, and I got, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Chelsea said she had something to lay out, which could be a big red flag, right? And poor Jimmy's like, okay, damn it, what is it now? I, don't, I heard about the kid. You ain't go to college you went to trade school 42 times you know you, know you could have got a college degree by then right <laughs> you can see the stress on jimmy's yeah. face <laughs> jack of all trade master of none and it's funny like i was the only flight attendant in my training class that didn't go to college it's like <laughs> so that's awesome but it I agree. You don't have to go to college to be successful doing it in your right. life. So it's not at like all. you have to do it. So there's no slight to Chelsea for not going to college. But you did see Jimmy's face. He was just like, mm? <laughs> Jim, Jimmy didn't think because Jimmy was proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then she explains that she's divorced. She's been married before. She mm-hmm. got married when she was 18 to her high school sweetheart. They were married five years, but he wasn't her person. 
And Jimmy's just sitting there just like, Jesus. <laughs> and here's the reality when it comes to dating, whether it's on this show or in real life, everybody has something. Yes. Everybody's gone through something. So yes. you got to be a lot more open. The, the further you get past 18, 19, 20, mm -hmm. people have things. Yes. And you got to be open They've to that. They've lived a life. They've and lived a life. And you got to be open to that. You can't judge them for it. It's just Jimmy's thinking to myself, I'm on a show. I have all these options. And every pod I go, it's different bomb after different bomb after different bomb. Yo, Jimmy's sitting over there like, ah, what yeah. the hell? And she's like, uh, are you okay? He's like, well, you know, I had some scarier news today from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> the way he said that <laughs> said everything. Yeah, he's just like, Jesus, he's gonna start walking to every other pod. Hey, I'm Jimmy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's your now? Here's what I thought was interesting about Chelsea. Why is she so emotional and crying about that? Right. If you chose to get married at 18, mm -hmm. lasted five years, divorce didn't work out, you made choices, you grew, and you moved on. Yeah. Why feel bad about telling someone about your past unless you also feel like you made a mistake and well, you don't want to own it because, or you feel like you're going to be judged. But regardless, that's the decision you made. Hey, this is what I did. I learned something. I got through it. Here I am today. And if someone has an issue with it, you know, F them, but don't start crying, get all emotional because you chose this your life. But okay, let's be fair. Jimmy did kind of judge her for it because he says, I need a moment. And she takes it as he doesn't like her, but he's actually saying the opposite. But that's but the way his reaction, and I get it. He just got the kid dropped on him. Then, then he gets, you give him the no college. And then now this, he's just like, holy crap. He, he just doesn't know how to dig out of this hole. He's just, better news for Chelsea. She has another date. It's with right. Trevor this time. And Trevor Guessed said, on. <laughs> called, called Trevor Gaston. <laughs> yeah. Here's the interesting thing. Trevor tells her the last girl he was with, he just knew he would marry her. And I thought that was going to send Chelsea in a spiral like it, like her news said Jimmy after like, oh well, Jesus, what's this now? <laughs> well, he he felt that he was with someone and they talked about getting married, it would have thought, and she asked what held you up. And Trevor said, I have to be a thousand percent sure. Right. And I I was kind of impressed by that because mm. I've been to I've I've stood in many weddings where I'm like, Are you sure <laughs> you want to do this? Yeah. You should I've stood in weddings where I'm like, there's no way this is gonna last longer than six months. Right. You know, but you're just like, Are you sure? He wants to be a thousand percent sure. And so then he asked her, like, you've ever, you know been that much in love or, or thought about marriage. And that's when she drops the bomb. And she's like, he's like, what? Yeah, I thought we told you about this yesterday. No, you didn't tell I me like, about this. I like how he made a joke about it. He's like, so does that mean you were close? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, now nah, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you flip that around. Yeah, well, and the way he handled it, he's very mature in, in mm. how he handled it because he said, look, Everybody has something. Some of what yeah. I was saying that, you know, you can't expect someone to be a virgin or they've never kissed another dude. And he said, it's so common these days. And, and it is, you know, mm -hmm. we see it all the time, but he's immediately clicking with her. Yeah. And he even says, I'm ready to propose right now. You know, I'm sure he was joking, but I think he was also kind of serious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's remember, he's already told the guys, this is his number one. So he, right. he's locked in and I, I, I'm not mad at that. You're locked in, lock in, keep a couple options just in case, because this is the pods. You just never know. Um, you know, they didn't really spend a lot of time on Amy and Johnny after that with them just doing that quick uh, song. I thought we could have done without the song. However, yes. it made Amy laugh, and that's what matters. He's, he's being silly, being vulnerable. It works. I just mm -hmm. don't want to hear the song. I don't want to hear him sing anymore. Yeah, I think it's no. funny and it's cute, but y'all can just edit that out. Yeah, y'all could have kept that for them. Send them that so they can enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> so, AD tells the girls she's about to go on this date night. She goes on this, uh, on this uh, well, night date. is what Because they're on a date night. Is it night? Well, whatever. So, it's late night. She's in there with Clay. And um, Clay says that he felt like he was never chosen by the woman he wanted. And I totally get that, right? Because isn't that how relationships usually work? one person likes somebody more than the other like you've been in a relationship with somebody you're like this is the one and she's like yeah he's all right or somebody's been like tell the one and you're like yeah she's all right all right so in the real world 
if you had a dude that tells you he has that whole player vibe about him, he's like, you know, Yanni, I've never been able to get the one I really wanted. You'd be like, whatever, man, <laughs> whatever. There could be a reason why they didn't right. stick with you. Um, so I, again, I'm just getting that vibe from him. Still not sure about him, but saying that he struggled with being emotional mm -hmm. and all that stuff to women. Uh, it seemed like he was on a good path of this conversation until <laughs> stop the claps until he pretty much just straight up. Yeah. But what do you look like though? <laughs> yeah. Yo, and, and here's the Here's the interesting thing about the way he, he was like, look, regardless of the emotional connection, yes, regardless of emotional connection, I need to know because I want to know that when we come through those doors, I'm attracted to that person. Like our attraction is what I want it to be, that reveal to be a super turn on is what he called it. Right. I'm not going to look at you and say, well, her brains are amazing. <laughs> Then again, he might, but <laughs> it can only be speculation. Well, and, and that's that's just it. What's the purpose of this experiment? Right. To fall in love with somebody that you've not seen, you don't know what they look like, mm. you're just going off the true connection. That's His, what you signed up for. Do you think she was right? Because she's taking a hard stand saying she's not going to tell, she's not going to give up her features. Because he's like, I just want to, he I like petite. I like um, a nice butt. I like, she has all, every feature he named, she has. She's mm -hmm. petite. She's got a nice body. And it's all he's asking about. He didn't, even, he didn't even ask about face. He just asked about body. Mm -hmm. Is she right, though, for not giving him that? Because part of it could be, she could tell him those features, but he puts somebody else's face on it. Mm -hmm. And that when he sees her, he gets disappointed. Right. I think she did the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't cave on her standard of how she was going to go through this process. Right. All because she likes this guy. So I was like, mm -hmm. kudos to you, AD. Stick to your guns. You came mm -hmm. on this show for a reason. And to be able to find love without being so focused on the physical. Right. Clay right now is too hyped and focused on the physical, which is just not good. Exactly. You know, maybe he just wants to know, okay, are you fat? Maybe that's what he's trying to figure out. That's why he that's why he made it a point to say petite. Well, I guess there's questions you can ask, but even then that's kind of different because I know back in the day when I was on dating apps, it'd be like, I work out five times a week. And I'm like, oh, really? What workouts do you do? I do yoga. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Another and way, hey, if Ray Charles grabbed your hand, what would he say? <laughs> well, I mean, it, every date I went on when that when that happened, I get that vibe. I was right. It was it was a lot more person than what I thought I was going to see, um, and what was on their pictures. So, um, so, so you, you can't really a, ask that. More bang for your buck. <laughs> a package deal. <laughs> How warm can you keep me in the winter months? <laughs> Give me an idea what that's like. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that she didn't cave on that. Uh, hopefully, Clay realizes, oops, I probably should you know, kind of regroup and come back to the, what this whole experiment's about right. and not be focused on that. Because if that's what he's been doing his whole dating life is only looking for people with nice lips, nice butt, and that are petite, well, he'd be missing out on a lot of great people. Exactly. And But what he did, though, was he set up Matthew because Matthew was on the date next with AD, and um, uh, this, was, this, this was the next day. And it, it, it turns out they've been thinking about each other, right? And um, and Matthew says it feels like the only reason, uh, it feels like the only reason I'm here is for you. I'm like, mm. Lines, boy, go ahead. He went all in, didn't he? I yeah. mean, he he professes his admiration, mm -hmm. um, tells her, you know, we could just leave now. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much saying that it's either you or nobody for me, right? You know, at this point. Then he asks her about uh, getting her dad's permission. Mm -hmm. You know, before he proposes. And I like how she handled that. She's he's like, what did your dad think about this? Well, my dad passed away last year, so he's really not thinking anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got a sixth sense of humor. And then she goes, yeah, we really weren't that close. Yeah, I know. There, there's that. But I just thought it was funny. He's not really thinking anything. Uh, do you think do you think that's what he went? Oh, she must be black. <laughs> Oh, he's she was like, how important is uh, ethnicity and race when it comes to a spouse? She gave it away all. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. No, yeah, I know. I know. You're wrong. Uh, 
but, but so pretty much Matthew is saying that he's not had a, a, there's no one else that he wants or has a deeper connection with mm-hmm. and I, all these things are, are kind of foreshadowing for episode two but no one else he has deeper connection with uh, when she asked about the race question because I was curious about that mm-hmm. you know from coming from a small town and he said man eh, I don't have preference I'm open yeah well you know you said it's foreshadowing here's the interesting thing because it's what wraps up episode one um he also says this too he says and you don't notice it till you rewatch it are you going to tell anyone what about what i said today and she's like no i wouldn't uh, this is between us and that and that kind of tells you everything when she gets back to the women's quarters because she yep. gets back to the women's quarters and she's already kind of told us like the women are really keeping it close to the chest well when she gets back to the women's quarters after this date with a with matthew there's one woman who is not keeping it close to the chest because Amber's out there just telling things. and She's actually telling AD all the things that Matthew told her on their date. And AD's like, Man, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I think you're talking about white Amber, right? Yes. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so white Amber says pretty much all the stuff that Matthew's been saying to her well, she tells it to AD as if, hey, this is what he said to me. I feel like this is a connection. And the look on AD's face, boy, she was ready to snap. She's like, huh, isn't that something? It's crazy out in these streets. Like, she could tell. That's she was the ready problem to snap. I had with her right there, though. I had a problem with that right there. And you think she should have said problem? something? Isn't it shady that she didn't say something? Shouldn't she have said something? Like, hey, you know, he said those things to me because this woman is. She's so happy saying all these things. And she's just going, huh. And she's making all these sly comments that, of course, Amber's not picking up on because Amber's on cloud nine. Mm-hmm. Well, you're floating all the way down and you need to just tell her, hey, come down here with me, sis. Let's let's talk about this. Uh, no, because <laughs> she has no loyalty to Amber. Oh, man. You know, this is a contest. This is a show. <laughs> she has no loyalty to Amber to be like, hey, girl. <laughs> I need to tell you, she's not Whoopi Goldberg from Ghosts. Amber, you in danger, girl. <laughs> He's wrong. She, she doesn't owe Amber an explanation, but mm. she's hot and she has every right to be. So I can't wait to see how when she confronts Matthew about this. Well, we'll find out about this in episode two as this continues. As, how are you feeling about it so far? One episode in. Interesting. I mean, the pace. I, I like this pace of how mm-hmm. they're, they're doing it. So... Um, but already, you know, you kind of, I started to not like Matthew. Then I was like, okay, Matthew's not bad. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, Matthew. So <laughs> all in one episode, all in one episode. I, I went all over the place with this dude. So uh, I'm liking it so far though. So I, we're off to a good start. Can't wait to see what episode two looks like. All right. Do us a favor. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Episode two, episode three. Four, five, six, all coming until before the next drop, because the next drop is next Wednesday. And then it kind of slows down a little bit. Thank God. Whew. Thought they're going to yeah. drop six episodes a week. I'm like, Jesus, we yeah. need a break. <laughs> between all the, between these and the other shows we're doing, like, this is my weekend, right? I have a three day work weekend. And my boss is like, what are you doing this weekend? I got to do the podcast. I got a lot of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it for you we thank you thank you very much um and please tell a friend and tell a friend hey come check out this these two crazy guys talking about this wonderful show that we all love love definitely is blind preach <laughs> hey i'm yanni rude and i'm just terrell make sure you follow us at yanni rude at just terrell and at rgrt pod yeah send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit from the internet we'll talk about it on the show it's the regular guys random thoughts podcast cheers, cheers. 